Okay, this is all the bits and pieces I'm going to use to create a band splitter or a uh, diplex or duplex or whatever you want to call it for a handheld dual band Yagi, a 70 centimeter and 20 meter handheld for uplinking and downlinking to CubeSats that are put in orbit by AMSAT and other organizations. So what we're going to do here is use one handheld radio but we have to be able to split the bands between the two respective antennas or else we won't get satisfactory results. Now I want to say right off the bat here that you see the card down there with a spool of wire on it with Kent Brinton and his call sign. I want to give credit to him because this design is his and uh, I don't want to uh, cause any problem with him. So I'm going to go ahead and start constructing this and hopefully I will be able to uh, talk to people around my uh, continent and such uh, using uh, HamSat satellites that are uh, approximately anywhere between 400 and 800 kilometers above me. Okay, just a quick shot of the aero antenna I'm going to be using. As you can see, it's a handheld. It uses BNC connectors and gamma matches on both the driven elements. Just the driven elements are installed right now so I can get the measuring on the cable correct. And uh, there's about 10 more elements that go on to it. I can't remember the model number of the uh, aero antenna. This is the BP model though. In the center there you see a little line in the boom. It actually breaks down into two pieces for backpacking, hence the BP. Um, aero makes a really good antenna. I've had several and I've always found them to be very satisfactory. The nice thing is the gamma matches also come pre-tuned which so you don't have to mess with it. Now holding an antenna like this, even though it's made of aluminum and aluminum aero shafts, <clears throat> it doesn't seem like it'd be such a big deal. But I found my hand cramping up a little bit. So what I did is I made this little cradle for it. Basically, it's held like this. The piece here is to keep it from slipping through your hand. And that is to keep the downward motion where the fulcrum is, where your hand is, from, you know, you don't have to keep it held up. This is a pipe hanger with the upright cutoff and just everything is epoxied on. Even though I'm not really worried about magnetic coupling or anything like that, I figured I'd make everything with wood, plastic, and epoxy for the back end of it. So anyway, on with the project. Okay, this is the perforated circuit board I'm going to use. I trimmed it down to fit into this enclosure. And I just used ordinary metal tin snips like those doesn't do an absolute perfect job, kind of crude, but very effective. Okay, this is a band splitter. It's basically done. Here we have, as you can see, the chokes, 70 centimeter and a two for two meter. And uh, the two connections to the antenna and the one to the HT. So I'm going to set it all up and give it a try on a couple of repeaters that are about 70 miles away. Okay, this is the 2 meter, 70 centimeter antenna. And as you can see, I have my arm boom on here. So this is basically what it looks like all assembled sitting on my fence. And uh, I'm gonna go ahead and hook up the band splitter and give it a try. Okay, I initially tested the band splitter and I was able to make very good contacts with it. I couldn't really verify the uh, contacts on 70 centimeter, but considering I'm ground level over rocky terrain and there's a lot of uh, um, structures around me, it's no doubt. So SO50 is going to be overhead sometime around 7 tonight. Hopefully this thing will be ready for it. Anyway, you can see here, I'm getting closer, get the focus. I've epoxied down the coaxials so they won't break loose. Also the chokes, I put a little daub of two-part epoxy there just to kind of hold it. So the design looks like it's fairly good. If you buy the one from Arrow, you can spend about 70 to $90 for the band splitter. I built it for two reasons. One, I just wanted to do it because I like doing things like this. And two, well, I wanted to save some money because frankly the parts I bought here only cost me about 20 bucks total. Okay, this is the little project box I bought to shelter this thing. 
and you can see the coax lines coming in and out. Those are all epoxied in place as strain reliefs. And also there's a line of epoxy here to epoxy it basically to the, uh, the project box, keep it from moving around. Okay, this is the finished product here. As you can see, the uh, project box has been epoxied to the handle itself. And so that'll ensure it goes nowhere. And now it's just a matter of uh, sleeving it back onto the antenna, connecting a radio, and making some QSOs or contacts. Okay, a 7 RPM, KS7 RPM. KF7 RPM, KF7 RPM. Thank you, sir. I'm in DM or Delta Mike 43 AU, Central Arizona. Okay, 73. 73, sir. KF7 RCM, QO, Foxtrot 7, Romeo, Charlie, Mike. Trayeco 1, Alpha Oscar, 